Well, welcome in the precious and glorious name of Jesus to the Ignited Mentoring Series. My name is Robert Paris. In this episode, we are talking about our desperate need to come and receive the waters, that living water that Jesus gives, that so nourishes, so ministers to us. And as you see that everything God does, it goes beyond. God wants to so fill you with that living water to bring you to a place where you're so overflowing, blessed to be a blessing. You have life to you. Oh, many of us walk in that knowledge about Him. We've heard all about Him, that place where we abound in our opinions and our thoughts. But He wants us to come and so experience and know Him. Oh, that this day, that it be unlike any other day, that you might know Him, that you might come and receive that which you so desperately need. Oh, how many of us are ignorant of deficiencies in our life? You experience these issues in your body. And finally, you go to the doctor, and the doctor says, you're deficient in this or that. And you take it because you're like, how can I? That can't be so. But you take it, and all of a sudden, you recognize the difference. We are so spiritually deficient. The desperate need of the inner man. In this episode, I want to share with you about how we are invited by Jesus to come drink of this living water. And I'm going to share insight from William J. Seymour, the man who birthed the Azusa Revival that spread Pentecostalism worldwide. And I pray that you would so have an experience, a divine appointment with the living God, that your innermost being would be so touched. There would be a ministering to you at the deepest level, and you'd receive life. You'd be forever changed, wrecked for all the old, brought into this living relationship with the Lord God, that you might know it and walk not in the knowledge about, but in the knowing of. Let's pray and let's press in. Father, we just come in the name of Jesus. We come by the blood. We come because of you, Jesus. We seek you. Oh, Father, give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a hearing heart, and pour in us a thirst, a desperation for you, Jesus. We give you honor, Jesus. We give you worship. We give you praise. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, so move amongst us. Minister to each person. Draw them unto Jesus. Let Jesus be lifted up and that Jesus might be glorified in this message. And I thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray. And the church said, Amen. In John chapter 4, Jesus gets weary from a journey. He's traveling and he comes to this well and he sits at the well. His disciples go to get him food. What they don't know is that Jesus has a divine appointment with this lady. She comes to the well to get water and Jesus asks her for a drink. And she, it starts this conversation in which Jesus said, if you knew who I was, you would ask me for a drink. And in John 4 verses 13 and 14, Jesus answered and said to her, whoever drinks of this water, will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up to everlasting life. There's something about what Jesus does in you that causes not just that place where that deep need of our inner being is met, but there's a flowing. There is a pouring in to the place of an abundance pouring out, where you are so blessed with life that now it pours out of you. You're living. Oh, God wants to bring you to a place where you are now truly alive, living in Him, abiding in Him, and there's a pouring into you and a pouring through you. Most of us don't abide in that place. We don't have that. We're all called to the place of ministry, to do something that while we're on this earth, we have something and we're pouring into others. But sadly, most of us don't have anything because we don't stay in this abiding place. We don't come and truly drink of the water because we don't recognize our need. We're not thirsty enough, but He will satisfy all who are thirsty. So may this day be the day that you would have a divine appointment with Him and experience what only He can do and receive from Him that living water that would change you this day. William Seymour said, praise God for the living waters today that flow freely, for they come from God to every hungry and thirsty 
person. That's what God desires. God wants, see, Azus and all those re revivals were times where God just so poured out, so drenched, so filled the place with that water that all who were thirsty would receive. But if this day we will draw a circle around ourselves and come and say, God, I'm desperate for you. I'm thirsting for you. I cry out, and that desperation has to give him the time, the place. We have to be willing to seek him diligently until he meets with us. To hold on and cling and say, God, you have as long as you need, because I trust that you are. I need you, and I must have you. I must have that water that only you can give. And we must come and cling until he gives, until he pours in. Oh, so many quit so early because they've lost sight of who he is. This woman had to get the revelation of who Jesus was. Initially, all she saw him was a man, a Jew. And she was offended at him for being a Jew because she thought she had confidence in her traditions. And she believed that based on the traditions of her father, that she was good. And many of us walk in the place of our traditions, the traditions that have been passed down, the legacy, and that we walk and go in these buildings that have heritage and history, and we boast in that. But we're not living in the abiding. We're not drinking of the waters. Seymour went on to say, Jesus, he that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. Then we are able to go in the mighty name of Jesus to the ends of the earth and water dry places, deserts and solitary places, until these parched, sad, lonely hearts are made to rejoice in the God of their salvation. We want rivers today, hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest. And we've lost sight. See, God wants to pour out through people. I got many people that come and say, oh, I don't need pastors and teachers. God uses people and God wants to use you. And he invites us to come into that secret place that we would drink of that water and be satisfied and drink until we overflow, until there's something that pours out that we bring living waters everywhere we go, that we touch lives with it, that we bring those dry wilderness people that are going through it. You have comfort, you have life to give, not just a nice message, but you have life. There's something that you carry. And because most of us won't cling long enough, we don't come desperate enough. We don't drink. We don't receive what he has for us. If I continue, Smith or Seymour said this, There are many wells today, but they are dry. There are many hungry souls, and they are empty. But let us come to Jesus and take him at his word, and we will find the wells of salvation and be able to draw waters out of the wells of salvation, for Jesus is that well. Like the woman, we need in the name of Jesus to have our eyes open to see who he is. Until you recognize him, until you see that he is the almighty God, he's bigger. I'm not talking walking in the abundance of our opinions of him, but truly seeing him for who he is. Truly encounter and meeting him and knowing him and recognizing your desperate need of Him. Oh, most of us, we want to worship Him more as an insurance policy for when we die. But we don't know Him. We don't have a relationship and experience and enjoy it on this earth to the place that while we're on this earth, we are drinking of that water and have an overflow to, to give something to somebody else. To have the abundance, to have life to you. And it's something that's in the very depth of your being, from your innermost being. That's the place where most of us hide and cover. That's the area where so many of us are broken and injured and damaged. And it's the area that we guard. But that's the place that must be so opened and laid bare on the altar before the Lord in the secret place of His presence to allow that living water to touch, to minister to. The real us must be exposed and we must get a real vision of who He is. In John 4, verses 9 through 11, Then the woman of Samaria said to him, How is it you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God, and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, 
you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Then the woman said, Sir, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. When, where then did you get that living water? What's the gift of God? Jesus. And we have to come that he wants to so give to us Jesus. And as we receive Jesus, he wants to give to us the Holy Spirit to give you something living, that this day your life will be changed, that this day you would experience that which lives, that which you are desperately missing, that which has been robbed from you, restored, healed in his presence, to know him. Not having to go through mediators, going through vessels, but having direct access to him and having an encounter with him. Oh, as Jesus kept pointing, if you saw me, if you see him, many of us see others. We see so many things, but we don't see him for who he is. Our religion has so blinded us, but today if we will come to the well and have such a divine appointment with him that we leave changed and we know him and we experience him. Seymour went on to say, Oh, how sweet it is to see Jesus, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, that great sacrifice that God has given to a lost, dying, benight world, sitting on the well and talking with the woman, so gentle, so meek, and the, so kind that it gives, that gave her an appetite to talk further with him until he got into the secret and uncovered her life. Then she was pricked in heart, confessing her sins and received pardon, cleansing from fornication and adultery, was washed from stain and guilt of sin, and was made a child of God, and above all, received the well of salvation. See, God wants to bring you in, to draw you into that fellowship. Oh, He calls you. And if we'll hear the calling and dare come, He wants to enter into that place of such fellowship until we ask until in us something becomes thirsty and desperate, where we finally see and the veil is pulled back. Oh, many have longed for the secret place, but they don't enter in because they're so rich in them. But if this day you would so come and seek His face and come to that well, I need water. Oh, this woman was thinking naturally. She was looking at a natural well. She was looking to Jesus saying, where's your bucket? looking naturally, but as she communed with him, something changed. And when the Lord God exposed the heart, all of a sudden she realized who he was. That was the place of meeting authority. And when she met final authority, there was no more running. There was no more hiding. There was no more saying and trusting in the traditions, but she wasn't being faithful to them because she was walking in sin. So even though she boasted in her traditions, she was not walking right in them. And many of us boast in traditions that we don't even truly believe in because we don't follow them. And Jesus will so expose us and reveal to us these issues of the heart that must be laid on the altar, that must be crucified, that must come to an end, that we might see him that we might recognize we need Him, that you would come and drink. Seymour went on to say, when she got it, her heart was so filled with love that she could take in a whole lost world. She ran away with a well of salvation and left the old water pot on the well. She went telling everyone. She went and had such an impact. And I think of how not long later, afterwards, Philip would come to the very place and have such a revival. And I wonder how much of it came because of this woman who got something that day and brought the revelation. Stop looking to the traditions of the Father and look to Jesus. Stop looking to our self and our opinions and look to Jesus. It's in that reckless abandonment. Oh, that this day, the Holy Spirit would open your eyes. This day you would so meet with Him. This day you would have that fellowship. But listen, it takes this time. We come and we seek His face. Don't quit until your eyes are open. Don't quit. He had to get her into this communion with Him, in this fellowship. And as they talked, it went from being natural 
till he lifted her and got her to see the spiritual, to see who he was. And he will do the same with you. He will meet with you and begin to lift you. Begins, open your eyes. Oh, would you give him the time? Would you give him the time and the place to allow him to work on you this day and to stir in you such a thirst where you realize you desperately need him? Seymour said, Jesus' promises are true and sure. The woman said to him, after he had uncovered her secret, Sir, I perceive you are a prophet. Yes, he was a prophet. He was the great prophet that Moses has said, Lord, would raise you. He is here today. We will be taught of that prophet. We will hear him. Let us accept him in all his fullness. May we realize who Jesus is. We need to get a revelation this day of who He is. Oh, Holy Spirit, open our eyes to see, our ears to hear, and give us a revelation of Jesus, of truly what He did on the cross, of what price He paid for us. And let us realize how precious we are to Him and our absolute need of Him and how He calls to us. He's crying out to us this day. And let us hear that voice. And let us run to Him and not from Him. Oh, we need Him. Oh, touch us in a way that only you can. Break us with your love. Father, let us be soft this day. Let every deception of the enemy be hindered and stopped. And let this be a day of divine appointment with the living God. To come to those wells. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father. We glorify you, Jesus. We just honor you, Jesus. We lift you up, Jesus. You are everything. You alone are Lord. We bless your name. We bless your name, Jesus. I thank you, Holy Spirit. I thank you, Father God. I thank you. I thank you. Seymour said, so the same commission comes to us. We find that they obeyed his commission and were all filled with the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost. Standing up, Peter said, this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Dear loved ones, we preach the same sermon. The God who is the same, the God who does not change, wants to meet with you. The God who came and moved among the apostles and the early church here, wanting to meet and move amongst you. There is no distance in the Spirit. If you will come and surrender, allow the Spirit of God to just so move on you right now, to humble yourself in His presence, to allow this day to be a change. And if you're back sudden, to receive the living waters, to be brought back, to be restored, to be healed. This is a day to repent. This is a day to humble ourselves on the altar and repent and get under the precious blood, to be cleansed, to experience an encounter, to have that divine appointment, to receive that living water this day, this day. Don't put it off. Seymour said there are so many people today, like the Samaritan woman at the well. They are controlled by the fathers. Our salvation is not some father or human instrument. It is sad to see people so blinded, worshiping the creature more than the creator. Listen to what the woman said. Our fathers worshiped in this mountain, and you say that Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. So many people today are worshiping in the mountains, big churches, stone structures, um, not in the mountain, but in the hills, but, in, but God's looking for us to worship in Him. For God is spirit. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe in me, the hour cometh and is, when you shall neither in this mountain nor at Jerusalem worship the Father. So many people, Uh, are controlled by men. May we come to that revelation that this day we would truly worship you, Father, in spirit and truth. That this day, no longer bringing that artificial traditions of the Father, that place where we think that we are saved because of the church we attend, our membership of, but rather having the living relationship with you. Holy Spirit, breathe on us. Holy Spirit, take us beyond the veil. Let us so see Jesus. Let us so know Him. Let us so encounter Him this day, Father, this day. Seymour went on to say, Their salvation reaches no further than the boundary lines of human creeds. But praise God for freedom in the Spirit. That this day, everything changes. This day in the name of Jesus, to come and drink of those wells. That the Word would be so alive, living ministering to you, lifting you, changing you, giving you hope, giving you strength. Let me finish with this. Let us honor the Spirit, for Jesus has sent him to teach and to lead us into all truth. Above all, let us honor the blood of Jesus Christ every moment of our lives, and we will be sweet in our souls. 
we will be able to talk of this common salvation to everyone we meet. God will let us, His anointing rest upon us in telling them this precious truth. The truth belongs to God. That you will walk with something to pour out, anointed, something living, something that goes deeper than the skin, goes deep into the very heart and core of a person and ministers to them, reaches them, and heals that which is broken, brings life where there was death. You have something truly able to give. Oh, I thank you. I pray that this message so penetrates, so goes deeper, so stirs in you a thirst and a hunger of this day that you would diligently seek His face. May the Spirit of God touch you. May the Spirit of God just breathe on you and move on you even right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And I say to you that if you don't have a local church and God is moving you, and you're looking for one, consider joining our online service while you're looking so that you might be ministered to and built up. Amen. And I also ask that in the name of Jesus, if this message has ministered to you and blessed you, would you please like, share, subscribe, and give your comments? Because as you do, you help us to reach more people. And I thank you for that. In the precious name above all names, the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you.